Grace and peace. God bless you. <clears throat> Welcome back to Soteria Prophetic Ministries. I'm your host and teacher for the next few moments. My name is Delisa Rogers Fields, and today I'm going to be talking to you about excellence. Talking about excellence. Um, I want to begin with the scripture. It's in Isaiah chapter 12, verse 5. And it says, Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. And then Psalm 16, 3 says, But to the saints that are in the earth and to the excellent, in whom is all my delight. And so those are just two of many verses of scripture that you'll find. <clears throat> pardon me, I'm battling allergies today. Um, but those are just two of many scriptures that you're going to find um, in the word of God as it pertains to excellence or the spirit of excellence. And when I think about excellence, I think about God's handiwork. I think about the creation and that everything that God did, you know, from Genesis 1 until this very present day has been done in the spirit of excellence. Nothing, nothing, nothing has fallen. You know, nothing has chipped. Nothing has broken. Um, you know, everything that God has done from the way he hung the stars, from the way that he positioned the moon and from the timing uh, that he set between the moon's time to shine and the sun's time to shine. You know, everything was perfect. Everything was perfect. And, and so even thinking back to the tabernacle in the Old Testament and how God was so specific about the colors that he wanted and about the type of fabric that he wanted. I was teaching a course um, last night in our school of ministry and I was talking about this man, his name was Bezalel. And Bezalel was gifted and talented in workmanship, in, in, in crafting and in, in, in uh, being an, an artificer. And he would he would uh, craft wood. He crafted gold. <clears throat> he knew how to, to to fuse colors together. This man was so um, beautifully uh, gifted with so many talents, but he worked in excellence. And God admired the excellent work that Bezalel, Bezalel did. Pardon me, to the point to where he said, Bezalel, I want you to teach others. You know, I don't want you to just hoard that gift and hoard that ability for yourself. I want you to teach others. I want others to to learn how to function in excellence and learn how to, um, you know, take gold and, and produce it and work it and melt it and mold it and shape it and make it into a beautiful sculpture or to a beautiful masterpiece or what have you. So God, the Bible says that, you know, God takes delight when we do things in excellence. And, and I'll, I'll be the first to admit that I love excellence. I'm, I don't do everything in excellence, um, but that's my goal in everything that I do. When I print t-shirts for my customers, you know, I, I hold the shirts up and I look at them and I inspect them because, you know, I, I want to present a product in excellence a, in my publishing agency when I'm publishing books and I'm designing the covers and editing and formatting paragraphs. And I, I, I love and I tell my, my um, author clients, I love that finished work. I love to see them see that raw manuscript, whether it's typed <laughs> with bad grammar um, or handwritten because some of, you know, some not everyone is tech savvy. And, and I just love to see how they take it. And I mean, you know how when I, I look at that process and begin to incorporate the excellence as much as I have and, and to produce a quality book that can be sold online or stocked in a store, what have you, it, 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 do, it, it gives me delight. So it, if it gives me delight just to, to work my gift on that level, I can only imagine how God takes delight in us when we produce these great talents that we have. You may be a teacher. You may be a, 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 a doctor or some person in healthcare. You may be an engineer. You may be a, a, um, a coder. You know, you may work in computer work. Whatever it is, there is a delight when you see that that project that hit your desk and you, you put forth your energy and you put forth your effort and you use your God-given talents and you use the secular talents that you, you learned from college or some trade or what have you and you, and you work that and you, you, you maneuver it and you manipulate it until it's finished. And there's such a great satisfaction there. So I want to encourage um, those of you who have those gifts, whatever your gifts are. There are some of you who 
make the baddest sweet potato pie ever. I mean, you just, when you make those pies, people are clamoring, you know, for a slice. Folks are ordering them. You're posting them on your social media and it's going viral. <laughs> I mean, because that's your thing. You know, many times when we think about something excellent, we're thinking about great structures, architectural structures or beautiful landscapes or what have you. But I maintain to tell you, it could be some of the most smallest, most simplest things. It can be the way that a mother dresses her child. It can be a way that a spouse engages the other in a spirit of excellence, in a way that God takes delight in, in a way that lifts someone's countenance and lifts someone's spirits. It's excellent. And so we want to strive to, 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 to operate in those excellent gifts. You know, we want God to take delight. You know, for those of you who are in ministry, as I was stating, I teach a course in, um, in, in ministry. And, and so, you know, one of the lessons that I taught them was on ministry etiquette and, and the way that we present ourselves and the way that we perform, you know, not performance as in man attention, but the way that you present the material, the way that you defend the faith, the way that you 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 preach that word. And, you know, it should be it. We should strive to minister that word in a spirit of excellence. There have been times when God has laid on my heart certain themes or what have you that he would have me to teach from. And, you know, the, you know yeah, of course, I'm using the word of God as my platform, you know, as my foundation. But there are times that I'm looking into you know, math, I'm looking into science and I'm doing research to, 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 to not just present the thought and the theme or the topic that he has, but in using the spirit of excellence, I want to use every tool that I possibly can to present a message that is full of excellence. It's not just something from Genesis to Revelation, which is good by itself, don't get me wrong, but I'm talking about incorporating other aspects of it, using chemistry, using uh, um, history, and, and just helping to bring a more um, a rounded uh, appreciation that will support the context of that word. You know, learning how to pronounce the words in the scripture. These are all evidence is evidences of a person operating in, in an excellent spirit. If you are a singer, you know, then it may mean not drinking milky beverages or beverages that are too hot <clears throat> so that it doesn't interfere with your vocal abilities. If you are a musician, musician, excuse me, then it means tuning your instruments and, and, and cleaning, you know, making sure there's no dust around the fan or making sure that you've got, you know, your chords not frayed. You know, just learning how to be more meticulous about what God has entrusted <clears throat> What God has entrusted in us, learning how to not take things for granted. You know, one one of my favorite pastimes, and I don't know who, not many, I don't even think my family knows this about me, but I love art. I love um, especially historical pieces of art. I just, I love it. Um, but I also love photography. And, and sometimes as a self-care thing, I'll just, I'll go and look for pictures of animals in their natural habitat. You know, I'm not too much into watching animal shows, what have you, because, you know, I'm not, I, I'm, I, don't, <laughs> I don't have the stamina to sit still that long. But, you know, in terms of just, I love to look at pictures of animals, especially like those up close, you know, pictures of animals in their natural habitat. I, I, I take such a, um, it, it's therapeutic for me because I'm looking at this animal who has no makeup, you know, they're not trying to sell anything, they're, you know, they're just existing in their own natural selves, in their own natural environment, and I interpret that as God's excellence. You know, it, and it can be the most ferocious beast. It can be, you know, a, ve a beast that if I were to see in person, I'd probably run or faint, <laughs> or both. Um, but is looking at and appreciating Whoever that artist was, first of all, you know, I give you mad props for getting that close or for investing in equipment that can let you zoom in with that losing quality. But, you know, having an appreciation for someone who took the time to capture that animal in that moment. You know, I also love to look at photography of, of beaches and ocean fronts and mountains. And, you know, I just it's so therapeutic because I love art. I love nature and I love history. So, again, these are all evidences of God's excellence. 
everything that he has done. He made our bodies to heal itself. If we listen, <laughs> if we listen to our, our bodies tell us, a headache will tell you something is wrong. You know, feeling tired tells you something is wrong. Um, our digestive system says something is wrong. So if we would listen to our bodies, which I don't all the time, I admit that too, but it, you know, it had, it had, God built these bodies to heal itself. And, you know, everything that God has made has the power to sustain itself or God has put governments in place to sustain it. So it talks, you know, we, the, the, the earth testifies about the excellence of God. And as children of God, we want to tap into that. We want to hone into that. We want to, to connect with that. And we want to produce excellence. And as I stated, I am not that one. I don't have all of my ducks in a row. I don't have all of my eyes dotted. I don't have all of my T's crossed, but I have goals. And so that in what I do, excellence is always at the forefront. And whatever I'm asked to do, whether it's a project at work or a project in a community or maybe I'm, you know, helping another agency or, or in my own business or, or whatever, you know, I strive to do what I do in the spirit of excellence. Because if you want God to take delight in you, which I'm hoping you do, because I certainly do. If you want to be one of those ones that when God looks over the earth and he looks to take delight and you're one of those because what he's put in you, what he's blessed you with and what he has 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 um, graced you with, you you've uh, taken on the responsibility of multiplying it back, perfecting it. You want to be one of those ones that God says, wow, look at her. Look at that gift of writing <clears throat> that I gave her. Look at all of these books. Look at these publications. Look at these magazines. Look at these reports. Look at the journalism. You know, you want to be one of those, <clears throat> excuse me, who has to give the draw. And God says, wow, look at those buildings that he's made. Look at the blue uh, plans. Look at the architectural drawings, what have you. You know, you want to be one of those that God takes delight in that when he looks at you, the Lord says, I am well pleased. And this is what he said about Bezalel. He told Moses, he said, he, God called that man by name. And God listed to Moses every gift and every ability and every skill set that Bezalel had. And then he said, you know what? This man is at such the top is at uh, such is at such uh, <clears throat> a pinnacle at the very top of his gift that I want him to multiply himself. And so for those of you who have been tasked with mentoring others or coaching others or counseling others or teaching and guiding, that says a lot about you. It says that God has entrusted you with so much wisdom in whatever area that is, that is not just for you to hoard and keep for yourself. God says, I want you to share it because I want to take delight, not just in you, but into those that you poured into. God says, I want to take delight in them too. So listen, as you go about your day, I want you to keep this in the back of your mind that whatever God is asking you to do, it could be a glass of water. You know, it can be lawning, doing your, your landscape, what have you. But don't just look at that as an ordinary mundane task. I want you to look at it again. I want you to step back and look at it again. When God created the earth and he finished his work, he stepped back and he took pride and he took so much pride in what he did. The Lord said, I am well pleased. It is good. And he rested. Okay. So let that say with you, uh, this has been just a short nugget to inspire you and encourage you to look again at that, which God has given you and this time engage it in a spirit of excellence so that God can take delight in you. Well, that's all the time that I have for you today. I pray that I've said something to encourage you and motivate you and challenge you. Until next time, grace and peace.